Welcome back everybody. Today is August 2nd and I actually fished here today. Um, I went out into the ocean and tried to chase that really good bite that happened yesterday and it sounded like it was quite a bit tougher out there today than it was compared to yesterday. Now that being said, a lot of my buddies got their kings pretty darn quick while I struggled. Now is that because it was my first day out there? Was it because I wasn't quite as prepared as I usually like to be? I don't know, but I felt like we were fishing pretty well and that I was just 10, 15 minutes behind the bite all day, nonstop. Uh, the fish were fairly scattered. When we first dropped in, I had a ton of fish on my active target. I can see them swimming through the gear. They were not very aggressive. They were not very active. Um, I don't know if that full moon last night, it was still up even at 5.30 this morning. I don't know if that affected them. They were just feeding all night. Plenty of bait. Holy cows, there's a lot of bait up there. But for the most part, they just they'd swim in the gear they nose up to the lure they just swim with it for a little while i tried speeding up slowing down turning left turning right and just nothing they would not react to it and then every once in a while you get one fish that would come in and start ripping around the gear checking out each lure and then it would turn hard on one and you get them and i just kept trying to stay on top of that group of fish just thinking that eventually they go and it was still the scratch fish and just one here one there get about every five ten minutes which is great and then you go an hour of just one or two bites and pick up a move. So we fished everywhere from the condos way up north to the lighthouse back down, uh, then around over to marker three to one. And everywhere I went was exactly the same. We fished inside in 20 foot, we fished outside in 60, 80 foot. Um, it really didn't seem to matter too much. So I don't know, there were definitely fish out there. We just fished a longer day than most and we got all of our kings can't complain the grade of fish was nice there were a fair amount of hatchery fish which is cool to see because that's gonna be good for us in the river and did find a few coho as well um a lot of wilds we ended up keeping two or three coho something like that so again not a bad day just after what i've been hearing the last couple of days i was pretty jacked up to get a white hot bite i didn't see it i know a few guys landed on them not me not my boat uh, let's see colors today. It started off on the back rods the deeper rods around 40 on the counter with Misty River spin fish 2.5 That one was by far and away Just hammering them first thing in the morning and that 35 to 45 on the counter seemed to work best uh, A little bit later on in the day. I started getting frustrated putting more of those out and god it was the craziest thing So my middle rod on the starboard side was getting bit best and had the Misty River and that was first thing this morning and my bumpers are 24 inches. My leaders were 24 inches as well. Just keep it keep it simple. I actually learned from one of my buddies, uh, Shane Magnuson, who's Upper Columbia Guide Service, who's been running the Pro Troll game way longer than we have down here. Uh, one of the best tips that he ever gave me was just choose a bumper length, 20, 22, 24, 28, whatever. Just pick one, stick with it. Don't change it up, only adjust your leader length. So all my bumpers are 24. That's just what I do. Uh, I'm not telling you to start doing that, but I keep them all at 24, keep it simple, and then I just adjust my leader lengths. So uh, that one Misty River Spin Fish was just getting hammered, just doing great. And so I put one on the port side middle, so it's at the exact same part of the water column as the other rod that was just getting bit really well. And I made that leader length 28 to see if it made a difference, and it did not get bit. But then I shortened it up so it matched the other one, 24 and 24. Still didn't get bit. So what's the difference? I took a look at both the flashers and one of the flashers was whipping a tiny bit different than the other. And that's the only difference between the two. Um, it was going a little bit faster and a little bit wider kick. So something's different with the fin. Whatever reason, that's what they wanted. But then as we went later on in the day, it went ice cold and my bow rods finally started getting bit up shallow around 15. And that was with the silver flame red herringbone. And that one's by far one of my favorite ones out in the salt. It did, it wasn't getting bit at all. And it was really frustrating me first thing this morning. And then all of a sudden clicked on and it was cool. Um, let's see. Like I said, a lot of bait. And with that active target, I learned a lot today about what's actually out there in the ocean. I could see the birds swimming around the gear uh, that were diving down. But what was the coolest part of today was seeing all the thresher sharks. I saw probably a dozen thresher sharks come swim through our gear today and absolutely 100% they were thresher sharks for two reasons. One on the active target, I could see their tail whipping around 
they got a really long tall tail that's how they feed is using that tail to crawl into uh stun their bait uh their food and the other reason is because we hooked two of them we had to reel our lines in super super fast get everything in chase them down we almost dumped an entire spool of line over 200 yards of line chasing around all over the place and the first one jumped clear out of the water in just about it was probably five feet off the bow i mean it was it was really cool it was about a six footer and that was just awesome to see of course right after that busted us loose but got to play with him for a little while um second one we saw him coming in the spread swim back and forth between the gear i'm yelling at him not to bite i'm trying to speed up get away from him which probably didn't help probably made him bite and he bit one of the back rods and same deal almost dumped the spool chased him down we were on him for probably 15 20 minutes and then just you just use that tail flipped around on the braided line and just sliced right through the braided line you just can't win with those fish for the most part most of the time when guys land those fish uh, those threshers it's because they're a smaller one these were two giants i could see him coming through the gear it's like oh that's an eight footer we got a problem and it was a problem um boy yeah i don't know it was a fun day for me at least i don't know about the other guides down here or for you guys that come down and spend a long time the first three four five days are pretty rough just trying to get your body into a rhythm and so today i was doing all right but i know that tomorrow i'm gonna be a little bit worn down third day definitely worn down fourth day fourth day exhausted but it just takes a little while to get that rhythm going and start building up your tolerance for being down here day in and day out long days you know down here at the boat at 4 30 this morning and it's about 4 35 o'clock right now so long days <laughs> but honestly it's part of the fun the my favorite part about buoy 10 the best part is not the fishing it's not it's the fact that i get to be down here for 28 30 days with some of my best friends and the memories that we make and you know, fish come and go right but it's the memories that you make off the water and the bites that you run into, the things that you figure out with your friends, just all the conversations that you have at the end of the day, it's 100% my favorite part of Buoy 10. It's not the fish, it's the people that you get to talk to on the boats here, your customers and the guys back at camp. So I'm excited. This is only my first day on the water, second day down here, but I can't wait for the next 30. And I hope you guys come down here and get experience that makes some memories too. It's, it's pretty fun, pretty special. Uh, oh, river. Uh, there were still a handful of fish that were caught in the river. Pretty decent bite, actually. Everything's been down low, like checkerboard down. Uh, when I was running back in, the water temp started heating up pretty pretty quick as I got closer to the bridge, even on the flood. So I would say if you're going to fish tomorrow in the river, there's plenty of fish. But maybe fish down lower, try and look for that. Well, it's hard for me to give you guys water temperature because everyone's is different. They're not all calibrated. But on my graph, at least, I'm looking for that 68 and a half usually. I haven't fished the river yet, so I can't say what it is this year, but that's what it was last year. So, brings up another good point. If you guys need any reference whatsoever, everything is here on the YouTube channel. We got Friday Flicks, which has uh, three or four full episodes, 28 minute episodes on fishing buoy 10. We have stuff on how to cross above the bridge. We have where to fish when to fish how to fish it complete breakdowns we got some tech tips on our tech tip tuesday one uh with a lot of that information too so we probably have well let's see eight nine ten years of these buoy 10 updates plus we got three four five episodes of buoy 10 fishing and probably another little dozen tech tips on everything from how to rig up to uh crossing the bridge like i mentioned checkerboard area where to fish and when the information's all there. So if you want to prep yourself, look at past Bowie 10 updates and look at some of the tech tips and full episodes that we've done as well as these daily updates. So with that, I'm going to get back to work because those threshers kind of beat my gear up. All right, time to get after it. Later, guys. Talk to you tomorrow.